What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have a four-game MLB slate tonight. It starts at 7.05. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Before we hop into things, NFL season is underway and get set for incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non drawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step 253342 in Arizona. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit KS Gambling Help in Kansas. Call 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050-247 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. NFL Sunday ticket offer ends 9-18-23. No refunds, terms, and embargoes apply 100, 100 off NFL Sunday ticket, not YouTube TV. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment. Commercial use excluded. All right, let's get into tonight's Smaller four-game MLB slate lock is set for 7.05. Uh, you know, some day games going on. We're going to stick to the main slate. Uh, we do, of course, field on tonight's slate, which is uh, the last game, uh, 8.40. Uh, and the weather note for tonight is that the Coors field game is set to have just a tremendous amount of rain. There's really no other way to describe it. It is going to be cooler, not only in Colorado, but we're starting to see some cooler temperatures come across for all stadiums. But a massive amount of rain in Colorado, uh, sub 60 degrees, and very strong wind blowing in 10, 15 miles per hour. No indication as of now whether this game will actually play. It, we're, we're hours and hours away from it happening, but the expectation is that there's going to be a lot of rain tonight. So this is a four-game slate that could very easily turn into a three-game slate. So, and not to mention the fact that it's Coors Field. This is obviously the best spot, spot that we want to be looking for hitters. So if you're rolling out one lineup, you may not want to have exposure to course field simply because there's too much of a risk and, and the game getting postponed. If you're rolling out multiple lineups, you can go about it obviously multiple ways. Some lineups have exposure to course field. Some don't you mix and match, whatever it might be. We obviously have to get updates throughout the day on what this weather situation will look like because it does not look good as of now. Let's jump into pitching, starting off the top, where Kyle Bradish at 10600 is the most expensive pitcher, followed by Kevin Gossman at 10.3. Logan Webb for the Giants, he's at Coors Field, 9.5. Nathan Eovaldi, 9.2. Aaron Savali, 8.7. Kenta Maeda at 7.6. Chase Anderson, 6.2. And Jose Urena at 5.7. So again, only four games. Could very easily be three before we know it. And we have two pitchers that are above $10,000. Kyle Bradish. For the Baltimore Orioles, has looked great as of late, showing a really high level of consistency. He comes in with a 24.7% strikeout rate, only allowing 0 0.80 home runs per nine, a 6.6% walk rate, which is great to see. He has a 3.82 skill interactive ERA, and not surprisingly, he's keeping the ball down with that 0 0.80 home runs per nine. He's mainly a ground ball medium contact pitcher, 60% medium contact rate is absolutely unbelievable, along with a 48.5% ground ball rate. So he does not allow any damage or limits the damage greatly. The question becomes is how do we approach this slate when we have two expensive pitchers, both you know 10K and above, between Bradish and Kevin Gossman? And, you know, frankly, I'll just say that I think Ke Kevin Gossman is the better pitcher of these two. Not to say Kyle Bradish isn't good, 
But Kevin Gossman is a different level and really the type of pitcher that we want when it comes to bringing fantasy upside. So when it comes to Kevin Gossman, he has a 31.5% strikeout rate, 6.4% walk rate, 0.91 home runs per nine. Comes in with a super solid 3.21 Sierra. Also medium contact ground ball pitcher. Not as much as Bradish, but 46.7% medium contact rate, 42.2% ground ball rate for Kevin Gossman. He also comes in with a 12.9% swinging strike rate, which is absolutely awesome. Gossam, Gossman, awesome for Gossman. Gossman is a great pitcher and that type of pitcher that we want for that type of fantasy upside, really bring the potential to rack up the strikeouts, go you know for double-digit strikeouts as we've seen. He's one of the you know, top options for uh, Cy Young. I don't think he'll win it this year, but he really has been having an awesome season. The question is, these are difficult matchups. The Rangers, you know, they were going slow on offense for a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden they've turned up their offense to a new level, and they're piling up the runs each and every night against the Blue Jays. Tampa is no doubt a tough matchup as well. When it comes to Tampa Bay for Kyle Bradish, with their current active roster versus righties, they come in with a 23.6% strikeout rate, which is the 11th worst in the league. Texas comes with a 20.3% strikeout rate with their current active roster versus righties, which is 24th in the league. So there's no doubt that the higher strikeout matchup probably lies with Kyle Bradish, but Kyle, we have to remember Kyle Bradish has a 24.7% strikeout rate and Gossman is up at 31%. And Really, no pitcher on tonight's slate can touch what Gossman can bring individually in terms of the strikeout upside. Now, when it comes to Tampa Bay on offense, they're solid versus righties, and so is Texas. Tampa Bay comes with a 121 WRC plus, their current active roster versus righties, which is the second best in the league, and Texas is right behind them at a 114 WRC plus, which is the fourth best in the league, and their ISOs are nearly identical. 186 for Tampa, 183 for Texas. So, no doubt these are difficult matchups for both pitchers. So how do we decide? Well, I'm just going to simply side with Kevin Gossman because he has a higher individual striker. He brings more skill to the mound compared to Kyle Bradish. You know, if we're going to pick one pitcher on tonight's slate, who's going to be going for 10-plus strikeouts? It's going to be Kevin Gossman. So I will take him in what's, I'm going to say, an equivalent match in terms of difficulty. I'll take him... And what is it? Three hundred dollars less expensive. That's not too much, but I guess every salary dollar helps when we're dealing with a very, very small slate. So let's just say Coors Field does play tonight, right? We we get some news. Maybe the storm comes early. Maybe it's going to hold off. Whatever it might be, just a hypothetical here. You know, rostering a pitcher that's over ten thousand is difficult to do when we're trying to get these hitters at Coors Field that are you know very, very expensive. You know, we we have hitters that are you know, in, in the high 3,000s. So if you were to roster Kevin Gossman and, and drop him into your lineup, immediately your average remaining per player is just under 3,100. And that's obviously very difficult to do when we're looking to get some hitters from Coors Field that are 37, 38, 39, whatever it might be. So is there another pitching option that we could look to tonight? I think so. Kenta Maeda at $7,600 for the Minnesota Twins. They are on the road going up against the Chicago White Sox. Now, Kenta Maeda has missed a little bit of time this year uh, with some injuries. Did not pitch all of last year. We have to keep that um, keep that in mind. And he only has 86, 89 innings pitched this season. He had 106.1 innings pitched in 2021, 66.2 innings pitched in 2020, and 153.2 innings pitched in 2019. I'm going back this far to just to show that his 25.8% strikeout rate this season is certainly very solid. And I think we can trust that even though it's from a smaller sample size because this is what he's really done over the past few seasons. 24.9% strike rate in 2021, a 32.3% strike rate in 2020, and then a 27% strike rate in 2019. So yeah, he's missed a, a bit of time this year due to injuries, but I think we can roll with the stats because this is where he's been roughly over the past few years. A 6.5% walk rate isn't that far off from the 71 he had the year prior. He is allowing a few more home runs this year than he has in years in the years prior. It's kind of always been his thing. So 1.52 home runs per nine this year, 1.35 the year before, 1.22 the year before. So we're roughly with, within the same range. I still expect some of those home runs to regress because he's mainly a medium contact pitcher. He's not giving up a whole lot of hard contact. It's at 54.6% this year. And over the past two years that he's pitched in 2021 and 20 and 2020, he was both at he was at a 50% hard contact rate, uh, excuse me, a 50% medium contact rate in both 2021 and 2020. He's not a hard contact pitcher. The fly balls are a slight issue for him this year, but 
They're higher than they've been since 2017 for him. So I expect the fly balls for Kenta Maeda to regress. Now, ultimately, we're looking at Kenta Maeda for a few reasons. One, he's 7,600, which is a great bit of salary relief that we'd love to have on a very small slate. And then two, the matchup versus the Chicago White Sox is something that we're going to be very interested in going to. Currently, with, with their active roster, the White Sox coming with a 21.8% strikeout rate versus righties, which is 17th in the league. So they're not striking out at a super high clip. But when it comes to offense overall for the White Sox, they are bad. They come in with a uh, 28th in the league right now, and they have an 87 WRC plus and a 144 team ISO versus righties, which is also 27th in the league. So it really is a super easy matchup for Kent Maeda. And he hasn't been putting up massive numbers as of late, but in terms of his salary, in terms of point per dollar, in terms of what we may need on this slate, given the lack of value options, just because it's only three, but it's only four games, could be three games. Kent Maeda is actually shaping up to be a pretty solid option. Now, of course, if you're making one lineup, Kevin Gossman is still probably the answer of who you should be going to. So that does it for pitching. Let's move on to the stacks. It's obviously, uh, you know, I would say a tougher slate just because we have so few options. And then again, we have the potential for Coors Field, the spot that we'd all love to be going, uh, you know, not, not just on any slate, but really on a, on a four game slate. We'd love to be going to Coors Field, but obviously it has a potential for this game to be rained out. So where else can we be going? So if Coors Field plays, like I said, feel free to load up those hitters from the Giants and the Rockies. We know what. Coors Field can bring. Outside of that, I, I think it's going to come down to going to some of the Minnesota Twins hitters going up against Jose Urena. Uh, Urena has been with multiple teams this year, multiple teams last year. He, he's just not a good pitcher at this point in his, in his career. He's really not. Uh, the walk rate this year is at 14.3%. It's coming from a smaller 20, 22.1 inning sample size. If we look back to last year when he had a 97 inning sample size, it was still at 10%. And the year before, it was at 92 and the year before is at 12.5. He's just not a pitcher that has a whole lot of command on the mound. He's allowing over one home run per nine in each of the last five seasons. This year, it's at 3.36 home runs per nine, but again, a very, very small sample size this year. Too much hard contact, uh, fly balls, not doing him any favors. And I think the Minnesota Twins are a team that we really should be looking to trust tonight and, frankly, might be one of the best options we have if there's going to be no course field. Now, when it comes to the Twins, Royce Lewis at $3,700 is their most expensive player. Jorge Polanco is $3,200 uh, for them. Those are the only two hitters that are above 3 k for the Twins. So realistically, they're looking like a pretty favorable team to stack because of the salary relief that we have. Royce Lewis has been great this year, and specifically he's been hot as you know in, in recent weeks. But they have a lot of options. Uh, you know, in their lineup that we could certainly be going to each and every night, especially when we're getting let's see, Jeffers, Correa, Kepler, Julian, uh, Walner, any of these players, Kirloff, any of them who you decide to end up rostering, they're all 2,900 and below. So when we see Royce Lewis, yeah, I would love to have him in his 259 ISO versus righties in my lineup, but we also have to factor in his salary. Can we go to Kirloff with a 135 WRC plus? Sure. Go Ryan Jeffers, 132 WRC plus. Sure, Max Kepler, 120 WRC+. plus. Yes, the list kind of goes on and on for the Twins, who are all good hitters. They may not all have a ton of power upside, but their salaries are really, really friendly tonight when it comes to roster construction if you're trying to pay up for uh, Kevin Gossman or Kyle Bradish. So the Twins are just objectively in a great spot, and they're actually what we need when it comes to lineup construction tonight based on a smaller slate, based on some expensive uh, pitchers, and their salaries that we're trying to get into our lineup. So, sure, Jose Urena uh, has a small sample size this year, but looking back over the past few seasons, I'm not going to be worried about literally anything that he's done, and I think the clear upside lies with the hitters from the Twins. So, Lewis, Polanco, Jeffers, Correa, Kepler, Julian, Walner, you name it, get them into your lineups. Twins, very easy tonight. Again, we have Coors Field. Where else do we want to be going? Gossman is obviously solid. Aaron Savali is on the mound for Tampa Bay. Uh, he's an okay pitcher. He's like not a pitcher that I'm... Um, he's not terrible, but he's also not great. He's just kind of this middle-of-the-road pitcher. Doesn't strike out hitters at a super high clip. I know he had this high 12 strikeout game or whatever it was 
recently, but ultimately he's still not a pitcher I'm super worried about. On Baltimore last night, they didn't come through. I'll be willing to go back to Baltimore tonight. Uh, but I also want to be focusing in on the Toronto Blue Jays, and they have been faltering these past few games in, in a very, very important series for their uh, wild card race. And tonight they have a chance to pick up one, you know, really needed win uh, against Nathan Eovaldi for Texas. And Eovaldi is recently returned from the IL. He only has two starts under his belt. He only went 1.1 innings against Houston, where he gave up uh, four earned runs and only one strikeout. He then pitched 2.1 innings against Oakland on the ninth, three strikeouts, no earned runs. So it doesn't look like Eovaldi is going to be going super deep into the game. He's 2.1 innings pitched. He's going to be, I'm going to guess, around four innings uh, you know, tonight. I, it doesn't seem like they're going to be ramping up at a super high rate, especially because the uh, Rangers announced that Scherzer is likely out for the season, unlikely for the playoffs or whatever the quote was, that they may need to really kind of take things slow with Ivaldi. If they make the playoffs, they're going to need a solid pitcher that they can trust. So I'm not expecting Ivaldi to be out there for super long. It's probably going to turn to the Texas bullpen, who I think are pretty average in the grand scheme of things. So this will turn to... The Blue Jays, and again, kind of like must-win spots for the Blue Jays at this point in the season. So, yeah, I want to focus in on getting some of their top hitters, but it's going to come down to their salaries and what we can afford. Davis Davis Snyder at 3,900 has really been putting up impressive numbers since he has been called up. He's a 221 WRC plus versus righties since, since he's been called up, but he only has 60 plate appearances. A 327 ISO is absolutely bananas, but I obviously don't expect that to maintain if we were to extrapolate that over the course of an entire season, but he is hot right now. You should absolutely look to roster him. If you can, then we have the normal cast of characters for the blue Jays of whoever you can afford, whatever makes sense for your lineup, George Springer, Vladdy, Bo Bichette, Whit Merrifield, if he's in the lineup, Spencer Horowitz uh, recently called up. You can go to him as well. 2,600. I don't necessarily want to get someone like Kevin Kiermeyer in my lineups would shoot for a player that has a little bit more power upside. So really, whatever's going to be making sense for your lineup, that's who you need to be focusing in on. Schneider, Vladdy, Bichette, Springer is probably the order that I would ta- uh, I would target the Blue Jays in terms of their priority for the lineups tonight. So it's a smaller slate again, four games, massive rain issues we have to worry about when it comes to Coors Field. We need to pay attention to that. We'll get updates uh, throughout the day. Um, you know, we want to be focusing on getting Kevin Gossman into the lineup so we can if that's not a possibility. Certainly look to Kenta Maeda going up against the White Sox in an easy, easy matchup. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. As always, it can be... Oh, no, let's, uh, let's close out on some dinger calls, actually. Let's close out on some dinger calls before we uh, before we close things out. I would love to pick an option from Coors Field, but I'm simply not going to be doing that. Don't want to be uh, looking to any of those options just because, you know, not expecting or uh, I'm anticipating... The worst, and that would be the game gets postponed. So I'm not going to pick any options from Coors Field. Uh, let's go with Royce Lewis from the Twins. Obviously, insane power from him in the lineup uh, for them. Always be looking there. And then with Aaron Savali, not uh, again, not a pitcher I'm overly worried about. Let's go with Gunnar Henderson, the lefty uh, future rookie of the year for the Baltimore Orioles, the lefty versus Savali. So Royce Lewis and Gunnar Henderson as the two dinger calls to close things out today. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. It's always going to be found on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. You can find the video version on the FanDuel YouTube page. It can be found on FanDuel TV+. Plus. It can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck in your contests.